Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to cover lecture 8 PowerPoint slide in this video lecture. So it's going to be um, half of the next chapter basically you know we will do 50% um, of the chapter and then in the next class we will cover the remaining portion of the chapter. Okay. So last class we looked at the consumer side and we looked into we analyzed total utility and marginal utility using different methods and we looked at the graphs and everything. Today we are going to start talking about the cost side so we are going to look at the producer side and get into more details about the different types of costs that a producer has to face and then how the different curves look like and how we calculate uh, the different costs and all that. Okay. So, cost in economics is defined specifically um, uh, by two different classifications. So, there are two different classifications of cost. The first one is the opportunity cost. So, by now you all know what is opportunity cost, right? Uh, in the beginning of the chapter, in chapter 1 and chapter 2, we have discussed in details about what opportunity cost is. So, that is one of the main classifications of cost in economics. What it means is that it is the cost of the next best alternative that had to be sacrificed in order to acquire a given activity. So when you are making a choice, when you are when you decide that you want to do something and as a result you are giving up the benefit of the next best alternative choice, the cost that comes from that, the, the cost that comes from that sacrifice is known as the opportunity cost. Okay, then the other classification is called the economic cost. We also looked at this. Economic cost is basically in chapter 1 and 2 we talked about total cost. Remember total cost is equals to out of pocket expenses plus opportunity cost. So that is exactly what economic cost is. It is the total sacrifice that one person makes in order to do something or when a person makes a choice or they, when they acquire something. Okay, or when they obtain something. So economic cost is basically the total sacrifice that you're making that includes the opportunity cost plus your out-of-pocket expenses. For instance, if you're taking this course, then you have both out-of-pocket expenses and opportunity cost, right? So your out-of-pocket expenses will include the cost of the course that includes the tax which is let's say $100 tuition let's say $500 and then transportation for the entire semester is $700 so these are all your out-of-pocket expenses but we also have to add the opportunity cost and let's say the opportunity cost is you could have worked 70 hours during this uh, one month or two months of semester and you could have earned $12 per hour so that is you gave up $840 just to take this class. So that was your next best alternative. So the total economic cost, when we look at the total sacrifice that you made in order to take this course or in order to do the something, basically in this case we paid 100, so 100 tax for the book plus 500 for tuition plus 700 for transportation. So that's 600 plus 700 is 1300 plus your opportunity cost which is 840. So the total co economic cost is 2140. Again, this is something we looked at in our previous chapter, but um, just a quick refresher about the different classifications of cost. Okay. So a firm's economic cost is basically the payment that a business must make in order to attract resources from alternative production and maintain the operation. So, so let's say I am engaged in the production of mobile phones and I hire materials and I hire labor. So I have to pay this labor, pay this material a certain amount so that I can pull them from different activities so that they are not going um, and uh, producing fans so that I can hire those laborers so they can come to me and I can engage in the production and they are not going to alternative production and I, at the same time I can maintain my operations okay so that's the economic cost for a business so again let's let's say there is an example assume you are starting a new business so let's say today we're going to start a new business and it requires hundred thousand down payment in order to start the business I will require hundred thousand payment okay or hundred thousand in funds in order to start the business but if I in, instead of choosing this investment if I decided to use this hundred thousand let's say in the stock market where I could have earned 20% of hundred thousand as a return 
but I did not do that so I decided to start my business so my opportunity cost is the return that I could have earned by investing this hundred thousand in the stock market okay um, so I could have invested this in another endeavor for the same amount with the same risk and I could have received 20% return. 20% returns means 20,000. 100,000 times 20% 20 is 20,000. 20, 20, so that is my opportunity cost. If I am starting this business with $100,000, then my opportunity cost in this case is the 20,000 return that I could have earned on top of the 100,000 um, that I am spending if I invested in the stock market. But I did not decide to do that. I decided to start my own business because I think I will get more return in my own business. So that's that's based on the, that's that's what the decision making process is for the businesses. OK, you must so as business, you must not only cover all the cost of production, but you also must cover your opportunity cost. So under economics, you not only have to cover all the economic costs, you also have to cover the cost of production and your opportunity costs. OK, so basically you have to cover all your economic costs. Now, there are two types of costs again when 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 you are running an operation or when you are running a business operations, you will face with two types of you are we will, you as a business owner will be faced with two types of costs. One is the explicit cost. The second is the implicit cost. So explicit costs are payments that are made to third parties to the of the business. So the we make payments to third parties that are not related to the business that we own. OK. Um, so these are payments to outsiders or non-owners. Um, you know, example of explicit cost will be, you know, like, you know, salary paid to employees. They are not related. They do, do not have any ownership in the business. We are paying them a salary for the work they are doing. So that would be an explicit cost. Then if we are buying materials, let's say to make phones, we are buying materials, then the cost of that material will be explicit cost. Again, we are paying third party vendors, insurance cost, equipment cost, Utility bills such as electricity or water bills. These are all explicit costs. We are paying third parties who are not owners of the business. OK, so and these explicit costs are also known as accounting costs. OK, and then we have implicit costs. Implicit costs are basically payments that you make to yourself as owners. OK, so these are payments to self-employed resources and are non-cash costs or alternative costs. So they can be known as non-cash costs or alternative costs. So, so profit is basically the largest implicit cost. So whatever your net income is, you basically take, you, you pay yourself uh, some money to yourself and that is implicit cost, okay? In economics, under economics, a firm must make a normal profit in order to continue business since owner resources could have received a return from alternative resources, alternative users, right? You have to make normal profit Otherwise, there is no point running the business because you could have used that that money somewhere else and you could have earned other returns. OK, so normal profit is calculated. We are going to see how we calculate it. But economic costs, another way to calculate, we know is out of pocket expense plus opportunity cost. Another way to calculate economic costs is all your explicit costs, all the costs or all the expenses that you pay to third parties plus the implicit cost, which includes the profit that you take from the business. That's another way to calculate economic cost. Now, let's assume another example or let's consider another example. Again, let's say you are going to invest $100,000 in a lawn mowing business. OK, so you decide you want to start a lawn mowing business and you will need $100,000, let's say, to hire some workers, to buy some equipment and to do some marketing. OK, so the total investment will be $100,000. But if you use that 100,000 in the stock market, you could have earned 20, 20%. OK, so your opportunity cost is again 100,000 times 20%, which is $20,000. OK, that's your opportunity cost. But and when you start your business operation, let's say you start your business operations. And after one year, your total expenses for the one year is 16,000. Then that includes, you know, the salary of the labor, the utility bills, the equipment costs, the material costs, the advertising costs, all those are included under the 60,000 explicit costs. And let's say the total revenue, the total sales, like you went to people's house and mowed the lawn and over the years you earned 120,000 in gross income. That's your total revenue. So we take the total revenue then we subtract 60,000 from it. We get profit of 40,000 
um, uh, 60,000, but then we have to subtract the opportunity cost as well under economics. Okay, so economic profit will be equal to your total revenue minus your explicit cost minus your opportunity cost or you know your implicit cost in this case. Okay, so that is $40,000 and this is the normal profit and it is the minimum payment needed to sustain your business or enterprise. Now here are some other formulas. Economic profit is again calculated by total revenue minus total economic cost. Remember economic cost is explicit cost plus implicit cost or total economic cost is equal to out of pocket expenses plus opportunity cost. So that's what it is. We will take the total revenue and we will subtract minus explicit cost minus implicit cost. Okay, so that's what the next equation is. Economic cost is implicit cost plus um, explicit cost. However, eco economic profit is very different from accounting profit. In, in when you, if you're in the profession of accounting, you will see the profit is basically calculated by taking the total revenue minus your explicit costs. We do not consider opportunity cost or we do not consider implicit cost under accounting area okay we will only look at the operating expenses we will only look at the explicit expenses so total sales minus explicit cost will give you accounting profit and accounting profit is usually higher than your economic profit because it does not include implicit cost or opportunity cost um, in under under you know even for the businesses when they are engaging in production they will consider two time frames we we talked about a little bit about this uh, during the price elasticity of supply but you know basically when farms engage in production and if they want to increase the output or decrease the output then there are two time frames time frames they will have to consider first one is the short run the second one is the long run okay the, so the short run is basically is the time period that is too brief to increase or change your capacity but it is a sufficient time to increase to your maximum capacity so what it's saying is let's say your capacity is one room so in the short run you will not be able to change this one room okay you can you only have this one room uh, to work with in order to produce let's say mobile phones or let's say shoes okay so that is short run but you can use it to full capacity so what that means is let's say I, previously I was only using 50% of the room and I was running the operations eight hours a day but let's say if demand goes up I can go up to my maximum capacity which means instead of using 50% of the room I will use 100% of the room and in addition I will be operating 24 hours a day for seven days a week that way I can reach my maximum capacity even if it's one room right so you know it considers the intensity of use with fixed plant size so your plant size remains fixed but the intensity of use increases during the short term if there is an increase in demand in response to that you cannot go to a bigger plant size but in the short run you can only increase to the maximum capacity you can increase the number of hours you're working you can increase the number of sp or the area of space within that plant to produce goods and all that you know and i gave an example uh, very similar in the slide as well of what i just talked about and the second time frame is long run okay in the long run all your input and all the factors of production are not are not constant you know are changing they, they are not fixed so the factors of production are not fixed so in the long run you have enough time to move from one plant maybe to a bigger plant or maybe to two plants you know you have that time and you can change your capacity so, you, uh, so in the long run, you can build a larger plan or purchase an existing operation to combine with your own farm so that you can respond accordingly to the changes in demand. So moving on to the next slide. Firms compare varied costs relative to output. So basically, they will compare the costs over different output levels and how these costs vary with different output level. The production function is basically inputs the input cost compared to how much output you are getting okay so we look into two things the total product and the marginal product okay so the total product is the quantity of output 
and it is graphed on the y-axis while the number of units is graphed on the x-axis. I want to do an example and then we also have marginal product. And I want to show you it's very similar to total utility and marginal utility but we are just thinking of it from the side of the um, from the point of the view of the producers or the businesses okay and total product means the total output they are produ producing marginal product is basically the additional output they are producing okay I will do the graph but let me first tell you this will go over this and then I will do the example okay so marginal product is the change in the total product from the change in input prices so when you change the input how much does your output change or by how much does your output change okay so um, in this case or in this course when we talk about change in input we are basically saying we are changing a factor of production right and only in this course the, the only factor of production that can change in this course is going to be labor so we are going to vary the labor and see how it affects the total output and marginal output okay that's what it is talking about that's what we are going to look at what is going to be the total output when we change the factor of production and in this course we're only going to focus on um, <clears throat> labor we're not going to worry about capital or land right now or in this course so we vary the number of workers or number of laborers and we see how does the total output changes for the company and then in the same way how does the marginal or the additional output changes with each additional employee okay so marginal product is basically given by number of output divided by change in labor okay and I'm gonna do an example with a graph to explain you how it looks like again it's very similar to total utility and to marginal utility but if we are talking um, uh, about this uh, from the point of view of the producer or the business okay so let's say you're given with a table and you have number of workers then you have total product and you have to calculate marginal product okay and then based on that we will draw the graphs okay so the number of workers let's say is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay so let's say that's given now we are also given with the total product when you hire zero workers you will not produce anything right so zero output when you hire one worker let's say you're going to produce 50 mobile phones when you hire two workers you will produce 140 mobile phones when you hire three workers you produce 200 so as you are hiring more and more employees your total output is going up makes sense more people are producing more output then 285 330 335 now you see it it is decreasing the total output is increasing but at a decreasing rate and then actually it starts decreasing because now we don't have enough space you know in within a small room we are putting in eight workers and it becomes too congested to work and that's why your total output is actually decreasing so at first it increases at an increasing rate with now increase in labor then it increases at a decreasing rate and then it starts decreasing okay then we calculate the marginal product which is change in total output divided by change in labor okay so and the formula is given also so here 50 minus 0 divided by 1 minus 0 so 50 minus 0 divided by 1 minus 0 so this is 50 here it's 140 minus 50 divided by 2 minus 1 so it's 90 here it's 60 here it's 85 here is 45 here is 3 here it's sorry here it's 5 here it's also 5 but here it's negative 5 again look at what's happening 
the marginal product increases and then it starts decreasing and after some point it becomes negative and when marginal product becomes negative your total product also starts decreasing even though you increase your number of workers because they can think you are at over capacity you don't have space for it workers you're cramming them inside a room to produce goods so they are not working efficiently and therefore output is declining so given this information we will draw the graph of total product and marginal products so on oops I'm sorry let me clear that out okay just give me a second let me so let's say you we have the x-axis and y-axis on x-axis on y-axis we will always have output and on x-axis we will have the number of workers okay or number of labors so total product curve will look like this marginal products will look like this okay this is your total product or total output we as you increase the number of labor what happens to your total output and this is your marginal product or marginal output the additional output that you get by adding one extra worker okay now look at what's happening at first the total as you increase the number of labor the total output increases at an increasing rate after a certain point it increases but at a decreasing rate then it reaches its maximum point and then it starts declining so when it is maximum at that point the marginal product is zero and when it is increasing at an increasing rate the marginal product also increases but then when it increases at a decreasing rate that's when the marginal product starts going down and then at this point when total product is maximum when when you have the highest number of output your marginal product is zero and when marginal product becomes negative your total products also starts decreasing so these are interrelated and that's how the total product and marginal product curves will look like okay so under this scenario how are we as an employer how are we going to decide you know given this table you know what are we going to decide like where how many workers do want do we want to hire in order to make our business most operational we will choose that number of workers that will give the highest marginal product so highest marginal product we can see when we hire two workers we get the highest marginal product of 90 so we will hire two workers because in this case that is when it will give me the highest additional output I can get after that you will see the output starts decreasing the marginal our additional output starts decreasing okay then we move on and then we talk about a couple of other different types of expenses that we will hear a lot if we are running a business uh, specifically these are um, you know uh, cost terms that are used in a uh, daily business operations um, you know so there are different types of um, uh, costs the one first one is called the fixed cost so fixed cost is basically the cost that remain the same no matter how much you produce of an output okay even if you do not produce output you will still have the cost of uh, the, you will still have that same cost and that will remain the same all the time so that is fixed cost an example would be let's say in order to produce mobile phones you rented a room okay and you're paying two hundred dollars per month now whether you produce zero mobile phones whether you produce 20 mobile phones or whether you produce thousand mobile phones in that room you still have to pay two hundred dollars per rent per month and that does not change no matter even if you're not producing you still have to pay that cost so that is an example of fixed cost so, so some examples of fixed costs are you know your property tax your insurance your rent 
and then if we depreciation is sometimes a fixed cost or sp specifically if we are following um, a straight line depreciation method okay um, there's another example in this slide assume we operate a pepper food plant um, as as our agri business you know the fixed cost in this business would be you know the renting the equipment you know we still have to pay the same equipment rent property taxes insurance phone bills toll free phone bills and then depreciation but there is another type of a cost also known as variable cost okay in business you have fixed cost and you have variable cost fixed cost are cost that remains the same no matter what your output level is but variable costs are costs that vary directly with the level of your output so if you produce more output your variable cost goes up if you produce less output your variable cost goes down if you produce zero output your variable cost will be zero okay examples would be salary of workers okay example would be material costs if we are producing more mobile phones we will need more labor more material so the cost will go up electricity bills we are going to use more electricity so utility bill will go up with the output shipping cost okay so in the case of the paper plant variable cost would include water bills plants you know we are buying more plants fertilizers and as well as the labor okay the last slide basically gives you the different types of formula that we use to calculate the different types of variable cost and fixed cost, average fixed cost, average variable cost, average total cost, then we also have total cost and marginal cost. These are very, very, very important, not only just for this course, but also for your future. You will need these things. You will need the knowledge for these for any other course, specifically any course relating to math will need that okay so average variable cost is basically your total variable cost divided by total output or quantity produced average fixed cost is equal to your total fixed cost divided by quantity produced average total cost is equal to your average total your total cost divided by total output produced average total cost is also equal to average fixed cost plus average variable cost total cost is also equal to total fixed cost plus total variable cost Total cost is also equal to average total cost times the quantity produced. And marginal cost is equal to your change in total cost divided by change in output or quantity produced. In your, for your homework, for your exams, always keep this slide available with you because you will need this. You, you are, stay sure you will get problems related um, um, to economics that you need to use these formula for. Now I will do two examples that will help you to understand how you can use this formula to calculate different types of Okay, so let me do the first example and that will be in a table format. Okay. Okay, so let's say you're given with this information and you have to calculate the rest. You're given with output, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Then you're asked to calculate total fixed cost, total variable cost. You don't know, but you're given with total cost. Okay, these are given to you as you increase as the, inc uh, the as the output goes up your total cost to produce that output also increases and that's what's given to you. You need to calculate average fixed costs, you need to calculate average variable costs, you need to calculate average total costs and you need to calculate marginal cost. So you are only given with this information output and total cost and then you have to complete the remaining portion of the table okay so let's start with the first line when output is zero when your output is zero your total cost is 110 that means you are not producing any 
goods or service at this time, but you are still incurring cost. So what type of cost is that? That is fixed cost because variable cost only arises if you are producing output. So in this case, the total, the entire $110 is your total fixed cost. There is no variable cost because you're not producing any output. So variable cost, total variable cost is equal to zero. Average fixed cost is equals to, you will avoid that. Um, this is equals to zero. Average total cost is also going to be Basically, your total cost, so these are all zero because you're not producing anything, so it makes no sense here. Now, let's say you're producing one unit of output, and you're given that the total cost is 170. So, how do you know what is the total fixed cost and total variable cost? Remember the definition of total fixed cost. Fixed costs are costs that do not vary, and they remain the same no matter what level of output you produce. So, Fixed cost was 110 when you were produced during units. So even if you produce one unit, your fixed cost will still remain the same, 110. In that case, the difference between total cost 170 minus 110 is your total variable cost to produce one unit of the output. Your average fixed cost is your total fixed cost divided by 1 which in this case is 110. Your average variable cost is your total variable cost divided by your total output produced. So 60 divided by 1 is 60. Your average total cost is total cost divided by your total output, 170 divided by 1. So that's 170. And what is your marginal cost? Marginal cost is 170. The difference between your total cost divided by your total output. So it's actually 60 divided by 1. So it is 60. Okay, now let's move to unit 2. Your total fixed cost will still be 110 and for every unit it will still remain the same because total fixed cost does not vary with the level of output. So that remains the same. But variable cost will go up as you produce more and more. So the variable cost will be basically the difference between total cost and total fixed cost. In this case, it will be 110, 150, 210, 310, 450, and then lastly, we have, sorry, 420, and then 560. Okay? I'm sorry, let me do the, I think I just made a mistake here. Let me do this again so it's clear to you guys. Okay, and it's just basically total cost minus your total fixed cost. 220 minus 110 is 110. 260 minus 110 is equals to 150. Then you have 210. Then you have 310. Then you have 450. And then you have 630. Okay, so that's total variable cost. Now, average cost, fixed cost will start going down because total fixed cost remains the same, but you're producing more and more output. So your average fixed cost will be going down. 110, then it will be 110 divided by 2, 55. Then it will be 110 divided by 3, 36.7. 110 divided by 4. 27.5, 110 divided by 5, 22, 18.3, and 15.7. Same way, average variable cost will actually go up with the, you know, will go down, and then after some point, it will go up. So we will just do total variable cost divided by your output. Um, in this case, 110 divided by 2 is 55. Then, uh, then we have 150 divided by 3, which is 50. Then it is 52.5. Then it is 62. Then it is 75. Then it is 90. Okay. Then we have average total cost, which is going to be 110. Again, total cost divided by your total output. 
it goes down for a bit and then it starts going up and then we have marginal cost which is the change in total cost divided by output here it is 220 minus 70 which is 50 here it is 260 minus 20 is 40 here is 320 minus 60 is 60 then we have 420 minus 260 is 100 then it's 140 and then 180 so that's how you will complete the table if I give you just output and total cost with the with that information and the formula that I gave you in the last slide you should be able to finish this table without any problems now I want to do another example using the same formula so it is very clear to you guys and you don't have any problems okay so assume you have a factory and you are, you produce brownie okay and you're given with this table quantity produced so the supply and the total cost is given okay zero one two three four five six okay then 2.5 2.6 2 2.6 2.75 2 these are given to you 2.8 2.85 and then 2.96 let's say this is given to you now i ask you what is your my first question is what is total fixed cost again when you are producing nothing and you still pay something that is your fixed cost so your total fixed cost in this case is 2.5 dollars because at that time variable cost is zero so you, all the cost you have is your total fixed cost that is basically 2.5 dollars now let's say we are producing at unit 4 so we are producing four brownies this is given to you in that case what is your variable cost what is your total variable cost so if we are producing four brownies your total cost is 2.8 your total fixed cost you know is 2.5 right so your total variable cost is 2.8 minus 2.5 which is 0 0.3 dollars that's the total variable cost to produce four units of brown okay now what about your average variable cost when you're producing four units of brownie that would be 0 0.3 total variable cost divided by total output which is 4 0 0.3 divided by 4 so it's 0 0.075 what about your average fixed cost average fixed cost is basically your total fixed cost divided by your quantity produced which is 4 total fixed cost is 2.5 divided by 4 so your average fixed cost when you're producing 4 units of brownie is 0 0.625 now what about your average total cost for producing 4 units average total cost is going to be your total cost which is 2.8 divided by 4 so that is equals to 0 0.7 dollars okay what about now you decide that you're going to produce instead of four you want to produce five units so what is your marginal cost so marginal cost is a change in total cost 2.85 minus 2.8 divided by the change in unit which is you were producing four now you want to produce five so five minus four so that is equals to 0 0.05 divided by one so your marginal cost to put so the cost to produce one extra brownie is 0.05 dollars 
So again, I have been using the formula that were in the slide based on the total costs and output information. We can get all this information that can help a business to make sound decisions and engage in production accordingly and determine their output level. So that's the end of lec lecture 8. Next class, I will continue with lecture 9. Until then, you guys stay safe. Thank you.